Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today we are making a berry crisp. Well, today's recipe is a great way to use up any surplus of summer berries that you may have on hand. It comes together really quickly, so let's get started by preheating our oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's talk about our berries first. You will need seven cups total, and you can use fresh or frozen berries for today's recipe. So what I personally like to use is sort of an even split of strawberries and I have quartered these because I want them to cook at the same rate as my other berries and also it would kind of be a little awkward to eat a whole strawberry in the berry crisp. So I've got my strawberries. I also, of course, I feel like blueberries are the obvious choice. Use those as well. Fresh raspberries, you can use fresh or frozen, but I'm using fresh raspberries today and blackberries. So this is the blend of berries that I like to use. You can use some of them, you can use all of them. I just feel like they really work well together. Now for some added flavor, I also like to add a tablespoon of lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice is best. We'll just squeeze this over our berries. Now, even though the berries are nice and sweet on their own, we're still going to be adding some sugar today. I'm going to add one fourth cup or 50 grams of granulated sugar. And I've been meaning to try this recipe with coconut sugar because I feel like that would also work really well here. Some places it works great, some places it doesn't. I feel like it would be great in the berry crisp. Now for flavor, I like to add just a pinch of table salt. It's like an eighth teaspoon. I'd say probably about a heaping eighth teaspoon. And then we're also going to add a little bit of flour. So you'll need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour for today's recipe. And the reason for the flour is it helps keep the berry layer of the crisp from becoming too juicy. It keeps things from just being too messy. And I tried this recipe so many different ways. And when I didn't add the flour, it really was just not that pleasant to eat. It was just too soupy. So once we have everything combined, we'll toss these ingredients together until everything is nicely incorporated. And we're just going to be gentle because we don't want to mash up our berries. Not yet, but I guess if you did, it wouldn't really matter all that much, but I prefer to be more gentle with them. All right, let's slide this out of the way. We're going to let it rest for a little bit while we make the crisp topping for our berry crisp. You're going to need another large bowl. Tear our scale here. And we're going to start by adding some flour. So you need three fourths cup plus two tablespoons of flour for this recipe, which comes out to 109, 110 grams. Oh, I went a little heavy there. I'm talking to you, not paying attention. And I know three fourths cup plus two tablespoons is a little bit awkward, but I found just three fourths cup made the streusel not quite as dry as it needed to be, not as crisp as it needed to be for a berry crisp. And using a full cup of flour just made things a little too dry. So this is just what works best. For the sugar, we'll be adding one third cup or 66 grams of granulated sugar here. And then I really like oats on my berry crisp, so we're going to be adding a cup of old fashioned rolled oats. And then just a little bit of baking soda actually works really nicely to not only help with the flavor of the crisp, but to keep it from being too clumpy and too difficult to sort of bite into. So this is a half teaspoon of baking soda. And of course, I love using salt for flavor. If you really need salt in something like this, we're going to add a fourth teaspoon. Without salt, everything just falls flat. Now, generally, I feel this way about vanilla extract as well, but vanilla extract in this recipe did not actually work that well. It ended up bullying the fresh flavors of the berries, so ultimately, we went without it. I also tried this recipe with almond extract, and it adds a flavor that's lovely, but it takes away from the berries. So I wanted the berries to really shine here. All right, so I'm just getting everything well mixed here. You really want to make sure that the baking soda and salt especially are well distributed. And then let's talk about our butter. So you're going to need one stick, or I should say a half cup of unsalted butter, and you want this to be very cold. I actually stuck this in the freezer for about 15 minutes before I started this recipe. And now I'm just going to cut it into tablespoon sized pieces and drop those into my mixing bowl. And if you only have or want to use salted butter, you could skip the salt in this recipe. Cut this up. I'm cutting it into tablespoons, but if you want to cube it instead, that'll actually help you even more in the long run. So, tablespoon it, cube it, just get it into smaller pieces. All right, now we are going to use a pastry cutter to cut this into a crumbly, crisp streusel-like mixture. Now, with a lot of my streusels that I've shared in the past, I love to do this trick where I melt the butter instead, um, I let it cool a bit, and then I stir it into the dry ingredients, and that works so well, and it gives such a nicely flavored streusel. I thought I could get away with doing that here, but what actually happened was the berries are so juicy and so 
um, wet, the mixture is just so wet that what happens is coupled with the melted butter, it ends up giving you a crisp topping that's not really as crisp as it should be. And it also doesn't crumble as much as it should. So the melted butter, <laughs> I love doing that where I can, but here we needed a much, much drier, crisp topping. So I'm just going to go through this a bunch of times until the butter is well cut into this and we have a coarse crumbly mixture. And of course I will show you what that looks like because this cutting in process is a little bit more manual. I don't recommend chilling your butter much longer than that 15 minutes because you will have a tough time cutting it in. Maybe not, maybe I'm just really weak. It's very, very possible, especially right now. All right, once you have your butter into like chocolate chip sized pieces, then I usually will just take it with my hands real quickly and I want to make sure that all of the really fine flour is well incorporated and I will just sort of rub it between my hands a little bit just to help it cling together. I don't wanna do this too much because I don't wanna totally melt the butter, but I do want to see it looking a little bit more clumpy. But when all is said and done, this is going to be a really dry mixture and it needs to be. So once I get to the point where there's no bright white fine flour lingering, and if I take some of it and pinch it together, it'll clump for me. It doesn't all have to clump, but you can see it's sticking together here. Then we're ready to put everything together and bake it. I'll just slide this out of the way for a moment. And I wanna talk real quickly about our baking pan. We're just going to be baking this in a nine inch square dish. Forgot what I was saying there. Um, I am using a ceramic dish. I recommend ceramic or glass for this recipe making a lot of noise. If you use a metal pan, it's probably going to bake a little bit faster for you. And I also like to really lightly grease the bottom and sides of this pan. So I just saved my butter wrapper from our butter. Just do a light greasing, doesn't have to be much. And then let's grab our berry mixture and we'll give this another toss with our spatula just to make sure everything's nicely incorporated. And you will probably notice it's gotten a little bit juicy while it was sitting, it should. Let's layer this into our pan. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's not even baked yet. Try to put this in an even layer. I mean, it really smells good. And it's probably worth noting, the better quality your berries are, the better your crisp is obviously going to be. Um, so in the summer, fresh summer berries are best. In the winter, frozen fruit is probably your best bet. But even if your fruit's not amazing, the oven is going to do a good job of drawing out a lot of flavor. All right, so obviously I'm sprinkling this crumble over top the surface. It's going to seem like a lot of crumble, but I found that the crumble goes quickly. It's a very thin layer on top of all of those berries. So this amount ultimately gives you a really good ratio when all is said and done. And I will actually sometimes like pinch little clusters of it together, but you don't have to do that with all of it. What makes a crisp different from a cobbler is this topping. So crisps have this like streusel topping, whereas cobblers have more of like a biscuity topping. And when it comes to using berries as the base, I really think a crisp is the way to go. All right, we'll take this over to the center rack of our 375 preheated oven, and it's going to need to bake for about 45 minutes. When it's finished baking, you may notice at the edges, the berries should be nice and bubbly, and the topping will be turning a nice light golden brown. All right, so I've let this sit 15 minutes. Don't like it to sit too long because it is best warm. So we'll go ahead and dig in. Mm. It smelled good before we put it in the oven. It smells even better now. We've got this beautiful berry sauce. Mm. <laughs> in case you can't tell, I'm really excited to eat this. And that is how easy it is to make this berry crisp. If you try it, let me know what you think because I really do always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Man, it's still so hot. Mm. Here's some ice cream. Mm. It's good. Of course I'll show you how coarse it is. I am so lame. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Not a level pan.